Thank you, Kay. All right, and here's an update for somebody who may be just joining us here on RT International. And uh, um, the breaking news that we are discussing today is our channel's bank in the UK has given a notice that it will close all our accounts without any explanation. But here's the official statement RT received from the bank. We have recently undertaken a review of your banking arrangements with us and reached the conclusion that we will no longer provide these facilities. Our decision is final and we are not prepared to enter into any discussion in relation to it. Well, we have asked the bank to comment on its uh, giving notice to RT over its accounts and are waiting for a response. Uh, and Anastasia Churkina is also waiting with us in London there. And uh, I understand she can now give us uh, some information as to what happened. Anastasia, do bring us uh, um, the details and to somebody who may be just joining us, uh, what is it that we are discussing today and the unexpected announcement of the bank, of course. Well, Marina, we are, of course, expecting or waiting for a response from the bank, but considering how categorical this letter is that RT offices received here in London earlier today, it does not seem that any kind of explanation will follow, despite RT's uh, lawyers now involved with this issue. What we can tell you is that several hours ago earlier today, again, our RT offices here in London received a notice, a letter from the bank that RT here has actually been a customer of for over 10 years years now notifying RT that all banking accounts will be cancelled and closed. Now this is expected to happen within the next two months and RT has been advised to find alternative banking solutions and uh, despite uh, the, us expecting to find out exactly what led up to this considering how many questions are now being asked for the true motives behind this step it is unlikely that we will receive any explanation again not just because this letter is so categorical but also because some experts we've been speaking to are saying that this is uh, a sort of common practice in the UK for the bank to not have to provide such an explanation. But the step in itself uh, seems to paint quite clear picture that RT has been a customer of this particular bank, which is part of the Royal Bank of, the, of Scotland group, now uh, saying that its relationship with RT as its client is over. What we can also tell you is we've heard from the Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson Maria Zakharova, who has not been mincing her words when it comes to Russia's reaction to this particular step taken by this bank here in the UK. Let's take a listen. It seems when the UK decided to leave the EU, they also left all of their freedom of speech obligations there. Looks like they're leaving all bad habits behind. Well, while we're waiting for RT's lawyers to work on exactly what this means, lots of questions now remain in terms of whether or not this is a step that involves particularly just this one bank or whether this might have some kind of further implications for RT's functioning capabilities here in the UK. And that's, of course, something we will be watching very closely as the story unravels with uh, more details expected to still come in within the hours to come. Indeed, Anastasia. Thanks so much for this update. It will be uh, going back to you within this hour, I'm sure. For now, though, thanks for bringing us this update live from London. Thank and you. Uh, the National Westminster Bank, also known in the UK as NetWest, is a large retail and commercial bank in the United Kingdom. NetWest has been part of the Royal Bank of Scotland group since 2000, and 73% of uh, Royal Bank of uh, Scotland's ordinary shares are owned by the UK government. Um, now, for more on the story, I'm joined now by journalist and broadcaster Neil Clark. Uh, Neil, thanks so much for joining us. So NatWest, uh, which has uh, cut off our accounts, is owned by the Royal Bank of Scotland, who in turn receives significant support from the UK government. So is it possible that this decision came from above? What are your thoughts? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the timing of this really is quite uh, interesting, isn't it? Because it comes after a week of intense anti-Russian hysteria in the British media because of what's happened in Syria. Syria has gone all badly wrong for the neocon regime changes, hasn't it? Uh, the Russians and the Syrian army are advancing. The Syrian army is defeating the US-backed terrorists in Syria. And we had the, the ludicrous debate in Parliament last week when we had neocon hawks calling for no-fly zones in Syria that would only apply, of course, to Russian and Syrian planes. We've had, you know, pick up the papers and we get these articles smearing anybody who differs from the party line on Russia. People like Seamus Mill, the friend of mine, who is Jeremy Corbyn's uh, communications chief, trying to make out that he's a Russian agent, all this sort of nonsense. 
And then on top of that, we get this news today, just the day after, of course, John Kerry meets with the British Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson. And what do we get? Lo and behold, we get a British government-owned bank uh, freezing the accounts of RT. The, the great crime of RT is it wants its uh, viewers to question more. And I'm afraid the British establishment doesn't want people to question more. It wants them to question less and to swallow and sink to the propaganda about Syria, the propaganda about Libya, the propaganda about Iraq. So it's about RTs being punished for, for telling the truth and for putting uh, voices on which don't get put on on the establishment channels. Well, certainly and the, there's another issue of popularity here, as uh, we have discussed uh, with uh, uh, some of our guests today in the program that RT has enjoyed uh, uh, quite high numbers of uh, viewers, uh, and uh, its popularity indeed is uh, very high because it provides an alternative uh, view and uh, source of information, of course. Well, um, Neil, just going back to uh, this decision, of course, uh, we have a lot of questions uh, that are not going to be answered immediately. Uh, they're going to take some time, but, you know, there's been no word on why the accounts have been blocked and uh, the decision is not subject to a revision that's what it said which is very categorical. but should we expect some official explanation perhaps in this case well we've got to push for one haven't we I, I, I you know I urge all viewers who are very alarmed about this uh, clampdown on, on, on free media in the UK to get in contact with NatWest to get in contact with the RPS to call them to email them and if they've got bank accounts with NatWest to threaten to remove them and, and to close them because I think that we ought to be writing to our MPs about this today. We ought to be making a huge fuss because the serious of, of seriousness of this can't be underestimated. This is about an attempt to push a legitimate news channel off the air in the UK to silence it because it's going to cause all kinds of problems for RT having its bank accounts frozen in the UK. This is an attempt at censorship. And if we're opposed to censorship, we should be doing all we can. Remember the just sweet Charlie marches and all that? Well, be interesting how many people are now going to come out in support of RT because as I said this is an attempt by the British establishment to get RT off air I've written about this before let's name names let's say who's been at the forefront of this campaign it's been the neocons it's been the pro Iraq war brigade Glenn Greenwald the American writer very good American writer but a wonderful piece for interpreter when he looked at who it was that was pushing for RT or Ofcom the regulator to take action against RT and lo and behold it was the Iraq war brigade why they want RT off the air because they want to control the narrative they're losing the information war. They want to silence. So I think all British people listening to this, watching me now, get on to our bits, get on to that best and ask them why they've done this and ask them to unblock the accounts and to get on to your MPs too. I think it's very important. Well, uh, what's also quite shocking is that there was no notice or uh, nothing uh, sort of uh, um, hinting that uh, this might happen. Well, uh, Neil, uh, we'll get back to you very, very shortly. So do stay with us. Do not go uh, away as we'll return and continue um, discussing this uh, situation and uh, just in a few moments time. In the meantime, a satirical Twitter feed calling itself the U.S. Department of Fear has reacted to NatWest's decision with this post, in which it takes credit for the decision and for a chain of freedom of information limiting developments seen in the last 24 hours. Twitter generally has been a buzz over what's happened to RT UK. The UK playing footsies with Obama by freezing RT's bank accounts, supposedly for biased reporting. What about UK bias on refugee violence? Margarita Simonian is reporting all RT's accounts in Britain have been closed. Freedom of speech in Britain is now officially a joke. All of our RT's accounts have been blocked in the UK. Free speech is being shut down. RT bank accounts blocked in the UK, editor-in-chief. GB can no longer boast we live in a democracy. What's going wrong, man? Since RT is launched, the mainstream media has repeatedly insinuated that our channel is a weapon being wielded by Russia in an information war against the West, branding it things like Putin's on-air machine and the Kremlin's propaganda tool. Now, top EU officials have repeatedly accused Russia and RT of waging an aggressive information war. Propaganda war launched by Putin against West, against democracy, against all of us. Ideas they pick up from Russia today and other channels. Very aggressive propaganda. This is nothing but propaganda designed to pervert the truth. How do we handle new forms of disinformation and propaganda which came from Russia? 
Now, this is not the first time RT and its activities have come under the spotlight in the UK. Two years ago, a billboard advert was banned in London because of its, quote, political undertones. Our London correspondent, Polly Boyko, covered that story for us back then. London's advertising posters have just got a whole lot more controversial. There are now over 500 of these across the capital with the words redacted, emblazoned across the middle. Now, the advertising that was originally meant to go here was for RT television, and it featured Western leaders, and it posed the question about what happens when there's a lack of plurality in international media coverage. But it looks like not many people here wanted that question asked answered because major outdoor advertising platforms here in the UK refused to put the RT ad up. They cited political undertones as the reason why. I guess they got banned because uh, the political figures on them, but I don't think it's saying anything controversial. It's just say it's, it's giving an opinion that's out there that people talk about anyway. So I, I wouldn't say it's offensive. It's very strange for me why they've banned the freedom in this country and it is not good for European country and England. Well, in an official press release, RT's editor-in-chief, Margarita Simonian, has said that the original ad was supposed to provoke viewers into asking themselves about what happens when there's a lack of alternative opinion in media coverage. But she said it's disappointing that some people don't even want that question to be asked. So now, instead of provoking questions, these ads are provoking intrigue. You can see them uh, writing that this is what happens when there's no second opinion with the redacted sign in the middle. And they've even played up on the ban, saying that for the ad we can't show you, you have to download the RT app. Reporting from London, I'm Polly Boyko.